My name is Joseph, and today I'm going to be talking about developer journey. So for starters, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Joseph Zeman. I'm a DX analyst at DX Heroes. We are an agency studio based in Prague, which specializes in developer experience. I'm going to get back to it in a second for those of you who don't know what developer experience is. OK, so what's ahead of us for today? Uh, like I said, we're going to focus a little bit at uh, developer experience, what it is, what it resembles in the world, and how it propagates. Uh, then we're going to talk about developer journey. And I'm going to give you some examples of how not to do it, and then one, how it can be done. OK, so without further ado, let's just dive into the developer experience itself. So developer experience, uh, I love the analogy that developer experience is basically user experience, uh, where the main character in the very middle, the user, is the developer. And it's basically how developer enjoys the work or consumption of services, how it makes them feel, how easy it is for them to get their goals done. Um, and overall, just like the overall flow, how well they can work with a product or a service. There are two main uh, areas of developer experience, internal and external. The internal one basically resembles uh, anything that happens within the team where the developer works, the internal team within a company. And basically everything that's uh, affecting his everyday life. So it can be processes that he, quote unquote, suffers from or has to follow. It's the culture of the company and within the team. It's the culture of the communication, how uh, developers or team leaders communicate with the developer. Uh, it's the operations or like uh, all the setup of CI CD that, uh, they just have to push their code through. And uh, it also is uh, how they get the job assignments uh, assigned to them. Whether there's the business value communicated to them, like why is the given feature that they should work on important. Uh, and then there's the external developer experience, uh, which is to some people maybe a better tangible. Uh, it's basically everything, all the materials that are provided by a company to developers of the third party, which can be any, any company that's going to consume API or your services in general. So what can you imagine under these materials that uh, are important for external developer experience, you may ask? It's basically the API design itself, the API, the documentation of the API. Uh, it can be any CLI tooling or any tools that basically make the job of a developer much easier, much more comfortable, so they can, for example, fiddle around before they decide, okay, this is the right product for me. It can be SDKs. And then one huge thing that's going to be spoken about a bit, er, a bit later is developer portal, where all of these materials somewhat converge together. Okay, so that was intro to uh, developer experience. And now let's focus on developer journey. I'm sure that many of you, if not all, have heard about something called customer journey. Customer journey, for those, those of you who, who didn't, is, um, is basically a set of touch points, all of the touch points that the company or service provides to the users where they somewhat communicate with them. It can be anything from simple registration or the email communication they send at certain point. For example, when you want to cancel the service, it can be all the all sorts of like customizable things within the app or within the product and so on. Uh, on the screen, you can see an example from IKEA where there are mapped, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten touch points. And as you can see, the, the level of happiness or like how user is satisfied with the surface uh, oscillates quite a lot. Uh, as you can see in the, in the third, let's call it a box or a quadrant, um, the user suffers from, the, uh, from s how slow the web page is. Then it gets better because like, you know, the process is much better. But at the end, it gets worse. Why is it important, though? Um, the thing why customer journey is important is that it basically sets the tone whether the user, the consumer, is going to um, promote your service to his friends, to his colleagues, and further on. So if the overall customer journey is poor, it doesn't perform well, and you know the customer gets what they need, but they are not happy with the service overall, they're not going to recommend you. And it's the very same thing with developer journey. 
because if developers do not enjoy working with your product, they're very likely not to promote you to any of their friends, not necessarily relatives, but uh, colleagues, for example. And as you can see on the picture, um, it basically resembles how people decide what product or what, what service they are going to use. There are five uh, main stages. The first one is discover. It's, um, it's a stage where users just looking around for the right solution to fix uh, or to solve their problem or to get to the point where they need to be. Um, the crucial part here is basically uh, the business web, the, the business website you provide for your service or product. It can be g2.com, which, uh, which compares different alternatives for different use cases, or any other materials that you provide outside that can be generated, for example, by marketing department. Then there's a stage of evaluation. The user has found your solution. They think it may fit their needs. Uh, now they need to evaluate whether it's the right fit, whether it's going to solve the problem or get them to where they need to get. Um, at this stage, there are a few crucial points from the developer's point of view, and it's the documentation. Like, the, is the documentation present for starters? Secondly, is the documentation well written? Does it uh, cover the business case I need to fulfill? And, and so on. Then there's a stage called learn. That's when this, the developer has decided, OK, this solution seems right, like the right fit. Let's see how quickly I can learn to use it. So all the other materials, like get quick, uh, getting started or code samples, so they can call the API from uh, the terminal or from their IDE, these are the important and crucial bits that need to be present. OK, the next stage, when the de developer has decided, OK, this is the right solution, I'm going to go for it, is the stage of building. And this is actually where they already have made the decision, most likely paid for your service, and now they need to integrate it as quickly and, and efficiently as possible. So what are the crucial and important things that need to be present? It's, uh, if you provide SDKs, awesome. You just save them a lot of time uh, with integration. It can be any other tools, any CLI tools, any other tools uh, they can use. It can be sandboxes or testing environments. Um, and for those, since you know, integrating is basically a never-ending process, and as your product evolves, the API may change. Uh, then also changelog has to be present in order to help them fulfill or basically don't break the production environment. And the last one, the fifth stage, is called scale. And scale is all, all about their product growing with your product. So it basically means uh, that they're going to start consuming more, more services if you are the right vendor for them or the right so solution for them. And uh, it basically just starts with that. You can also promote some sort of uh, certifi certification programs, partnership programs, affiliate programs, and so, so on. Now, the crucial thing, uh, as you can see, the pink rectangle, that's where the developer experience within the developer journey is super important. It's basically everything that is important for the developer throughout the process of implementing and deciding whether it's the right fit. And it's all sorts of documentation, like getting started tutorials, uh, different use cases and how to fulfill them, um, SDKs, change logs, and so on. So uh, what happens if you don't get the developer journey right? A lot of things happen, but more importantly, how can you get there? Like what makes or breaks the developer journey? It can be uh, just the simple fact that the documentation is not publicly present. User has to register for it. Even worse, when we're talking about regist registration, the fact that the registration is asynchronous, meaning that you register for a service and then you wait a few days for someone, you know, just waiting whether you're going to be let in or not. Uh, it can be the fact that the documentation is poorly written or that they are missing or there are like gaps with, with, in between the steps. Uh, it can be missing sandbox, so you can't just you know, try it out on your own. Uh, and many more. So if the developer journey is poor, what does it lead to? Sorry, if the de developer journey is right, what does it lead to? It basically leads to having more clients or more users. 
that leads to greater cash flow, which is something we all want. Um, we get fewer tickets from developers because they have all the answers to their questions within developer portal. You start also making some sort of a community at, for example, Stack Overflow um, or Quora. And that's another place where developers can get answers for the questions they have. And all of this is going to accumulate to greater uh, marketing reach because the people, the developers, are going to recommend the solution to their friends, to their colleagues, to their potential partners as the right fit for the given problem. And you, know, you may be asking, like, how is that possible that all of this can happen just to a good developer journey? What dev good developer journey leads to is simplifying the process of decision and purchase and implementation of the solution by the developer. And if everything goes well, you're going to be probably as happy as the people in the, in the picture, or, and you're going to get some flying money. Money is just going to be endless stream for you. OK, so we spoke about what is developer journey. Let's talk about how you can actually optimize it yourself and get it better. So first of all, the very first step that you always have to do is map, up, map out all the resources that you have. Like I said, getting started, tutorials, guides, SDKs, the state of SDKs, readmes, uh, change logs, everything that was in the map. Secondly, you have to place them in the, in the developer journey and find out whether the quality is fitting the, 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 sorry, the desired level. Um, OK, how do you find if the quality is good enough? You can just talk to the salespeople or the people that are uh, the most in touch with um, with the customer. It can be people from technical support or developers who provide technical support for users. It can be infield consultants as well. Or you can try a different approach and you can just do a user testing with someone uh, who hasn't used your product yet but might have some valuable inputs. Obviously, it needs to be developer. I assume it goes without saying. The next step is to optimize. Optimizing of uh, the resources so that the quality is at the level you need it or want it. And the level should be that the developer can be self-sustainable, doesn't need any more resources, doesn't need to reach out for help, and can actually get the job done as quickly as possible. And if you're not there yet, or if you uh, launch new feature, you just repeat the whole process. OK, and now to examples. I'm going to start with the bad one. Um, so let's just have a look at it. I think that the first thing that should scare you a little bit is the fact that there are three links already. And for the example of how not to do it, I picked a Czech branch of Societe Generale, which is uh, an international banking group, mostly operating within Europe, uh, to my knowledge. And uh, for the American viewers, the PSD2 is European legislative that basically orders banks to provide data to, through, through API to potential third parties, could be companies, could be users, could be, could be anything. OK. As a developer, I get here. I see there's a lot of text. Uh, I basically just care about the API. So let's just select, for example, CIS. Um, OK, let's look at the detail of it. Again, a lot of text. I just want the documentation as a developer. And then I found download section. OK, let's have a look. And what I found out, find out is that it's a PDF, which is just not good. And I, as a developer, I would most likely be uh, scared and run away to a competition. But if you're strong enough, and you can also find this via Google, which is totally different portal from the same bank. And <clears throat> you can see that without any context, I have no idea where I just got. I see that it's these are sandboxes, OK. Most likely for PSD2 services, OK, but I still assume. So let's just look at, for example, ASP sandbox. What do I get from it? OK, good. As a developer, I'm happy that I get to see some Sverger UI, which is a little bit bent. Uh, but at least I get what the response is going to look like. I can call it from here, from the user interface, which is good, better than nothing. So I'm going to look at the documentation of it. 
okay, how to. And for example, all of you non-Czech speaking are already lost because you have no idea what's written here, uh, which is not great. And again, if I had downloaded, I just download a different PDF, which is poor. And the last portal is basically the same thing as the previous one. Again, can be found from Google. Uh, I get to somewhere I have no idea what I'm looking at. Let's just say I want direct uh, access to accounts. And OK, API console, again, Swagger UI, that's good. But I have no idea how to use it. And for that, in order to learn it, I, again, get a PDF. And the last thing that's somewhat bothering me is that, you know, there's a type for SDKs, but I don't get them. I don't, there are no SDKs present. So why, 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 why is there a tab for that? And uh, on this example, I wanted to demonstrate how uh, having the resources not interconnected actually leads to very poor developer journey because the developer loses context, has no idea what he's looking at, and most likely, if the developer loses focus on something, he is just going to go away and search for a competing solution that gets the job done much better. And contrary to the poor example I just showed you, uh, I'm going to tell you about success story. And I picked Erste, Erste Group for that case, uh, which is, again, a large banking uh, conglomerate operating within uh, East, uh, Eastern and Central Europe. And I picked it because they uh, do the very same thing as Societe Generale, uh, but they do it so much better. You can check it yourself. And uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, if there are any questions from your end, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Yosef. In the meanwhile, um, for the audience, wow, inception, lots of me. Hi. <laughs> uh, so for the meanwhile for the audience, uh, people are asking to see your slides uh, because they um, there is a bandwidth issue to going round and round the world. Uh, so um, you put a link. Um, some people can't download, but uh, I also promise that we will uh, upload your slides. Um, as a PDF um, sequence. So, thank you. Um, while we are waiting for questions, um, I had one thing, because I'm usually busy with emotions and, and people and whatever they say may not be what they really feel. And you had uh, in that really awesome journey mind map from different dimensions, uh, the emoticons, what question do you ask is it sorry, is this helpful know. are you frustrated what are you asking when you are asking developers about their feelings or you just go with emojis and they name it i i'm not sure i, I understand the question properly can you can you rephrase it for example mm, we often talk about friction and mm -hmm. frustration and um, maybe I'll be feeling a little bit lost. Um, when you show that the emotion of the developer on, its, on his or her on their journey is fluctuating from positive to negative, when you're measuring mm -hmm. that, what is it that you ask? What feelings are you asking? Or you work with uh, pictures? There's basically no set of questions that would fit all of the categories for all the materials. Um, plus, every product is different, so you have to work with what you get. Mm -hmm. But overall, like emojis are basically like, you know, they pinpoint you uh, at the general emotion that's present at that stage. But you also have to write down why is the emotion present. It can be, I'm frustrated because this material is uh, not complete. I can, I'm frustrated because I can't find it within the documentation at all, or it's mm -hmm. just buried somewhere very deep. Uh, so you need to also provide some context why the emotion of such kind is present. Mm -hmm. And when you are designing developer experience, this is a question from Janet Swisher. Um, what skills do you think uh, one would need to design developer experience? Well, 
it's my daily bread basically and uh, I combine skills of technical and business analysis you have to be able to talk to the stakeholders which are developers in the jargon that they use uh, so that's basically somewhat the business part of it and then you have to be able to propagate it through the technical um, detail to developers to actually build the result that needs to be delivered mm -hmm. What was the hardest skill for you to pick up? Whew, you got me on the spot. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to tell. I think, I don't think I can answer it at the moment. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, Mark is asking you um, whether this is where you would use friction logging. Ooh. I'm actually not sure uh, what it stands for, so I don't know. Mark, could you clarify for us, Mark, what you mean, uh, I guess, by friction logging, or it is the this that you want clarification on, Josef? It will be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. And in the meanwhile, uh, Rajat is asking you how to get a developer journey map. Well, uh, you can find it on our website or if it's in the presentation that's going to be sent, or I can just mm -hmm. uh, show it again. Mm -hmm. Dave is asking you, you talked a lot about what developers don't like, but what are a few high value things that they do like? Well, even though developers say they hate reading documentation, they actually love it because if it's not present, they're just going to be lost. They love to know how to get started quickly. So getting started is crucial. So I would say that's, uh, that's a really high value thing that's over time sometimes overlooked. Mm -hmm. It's my question. Um, I'm not sure if you have enough time, but in a nutshell, uh, what developer personas do you work with? Because there's no such thing as a developer, of course. Yeah, um, we basically operate or mostly work with uh, developers who are from uh, fintech industry. They have mm -hmm. specialization, specialization in fintech, uh, mostly mid-year to senior. And the languages they, they work with are typically Java or TypeScript. Mm -hmm. And then you optimize the developer experience for this persona. Yes. And it's mm -hmm. important to actually, you know, each developer or like target, each industry is different. Each level of developer or like seniority is different. Uh, and there are different rules you have to apply for, for different languages. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mark clarified a little bit. Um, a friction log is an output of a UX exercise where the user details their emotions at every step of a product journey. So my question is basically, is a friction log the tool that you would use to gauge sentiment on a developer journey? I'm going to need a second to read it again. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm reading uh, from Prashnat also. Right. Okay. I, I, I think I understand. Yeah. It's, uh, it's basically the technique that I suggested with uh, the user testing that you sit down with the developer or the end user of the, of the tools you have and materials you have, and you can definitely use this, uh, method to actually get the information from the developer and map them out. I know that, um, at Merseburg university, uh, in Germany, Professor Michael Meng and his team, they were doing a lot of this um, uh, scientific research, logged academic level research on such logging and eye movement tracking and such things. So there is, um, and these are published, uh, the methods also, because these are scientific articles, if you would like to, um, for the audience, if you're interested in the official approach. Mm. Awesome. Prashnat is asking you, what tools and techniques can be leveraged and integrated with a developer portal to capture friction points? 
Well, a large part of the, any developer portal is the tech writing or the documentation, how, how it's uh, basically prepared for the developers. So tech writing is definitely something you need to work on. Uh, then there's a lot of user experience or UX and designing that you need to take into account. So I, I guess these, the, these two would be really important. Mm -hmm. If you, this is again my question, if you have limited resources and you need to get the biggest bug for the shortest time, the least money, what would you do? I think I already said it in the presentation. Uh, what I would do is talk to the support department, find out where the where people get lost the most, where people actually drop off the most. If you have a high, uh, if you have a lot of visits for your business web and a lot of visits for your developer portal, but very small amount or number of the developers actually turn into paying clients, then there's probably a problem with something as simple as you know how do they start working with your product. I would focus on the very beginning mm -hmm. if you're not happy with the conversion rate. Mm -hmm. And maybe look at the product, but we don't talk about that. Okay, um, one more question. Prashnath was asking, yes, what, uh, what questions to ask to gauge developer satisfaction? Mm, and I think you answered that to how mm -hmm. you, that to ask with first general maybe emojis and then ask for a specific clarification on the yeah. specific thing that yeah. they don't like uh, what find. frustrates them about it yeah. mm -hmm. question from peter i'm wondering what your thoughts are about custom developer portals versus off-the-shelf solutions at what point do you think people may decide an off-the-shelf solution can no longer meet their needs and they need to build a custom site to meet their developer experience goals. I have to give a warning here. This is a vendor neutral place. So please be gentle <laughs> and appreciative for all solutions. Right. I believe that uh, box solutions are really helpful at the very beginning of the product. And for example, if you're scaling, if you're a scale up, then it's still a very good solution for you. Uh, where it starts to break when you uh, start rolling, rolling out a lot of features and the developer portal just basically becomes the representation of documentation. Um, you also need to provide some testing environment in the background and so on. So for each company, it's going to be different point, but you're gonna, there are going to be tell signs uh, for the company. Okay, it's probably time to start building something custom for ourselves. Mm -hmm. What tools do you use to keep track of project requirements? Well, in our company right now, uh, we work with ClickUp. I'm not going to lie, I'm not very satisfied with it, uh, but it works for uh, the rest of the team, so that's good. Mm -hmm. I believe that Jira, even though it seems uh, heavy weighted for a lot of projects, is a good solution as well. Mm -hmm. And then I have a pet peeve um, to ask. Do you have a practice that you do to bring feedback that's hidden in different channels, different conversations together? Do you have a suggestion for that? Mm -hmm. This came up with an interview um, lost uh, with uh, Myra. Uh, Anthony was talking about how they pulled that off and it's quite a feat, a lot of work. Um, mm. It's a, it's a many headed monster and it keeps growing heads. But basically he was saying the typical thing is you have Slack channels, you have emails, you have a uh, support uh, database, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of important information is there on customer feedback. How do you mm -hmm. pull that together to be explorable, but not overwhelming? Do you do mm -hmm. this? Do you have suggestions for this? I believe that uh, this requirements or like problems uh, collection is not something that's going to happen overnight. It's, a, it's an mm -hmm. activity that's, uh, first of all, going to be continuous. But the larger the company, the more time you have to spend up front. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, what I would recommend at certain point, this should be done uh, over the span, for example, of two months uh, or three months, depending on the size of a company. 
if you want to start straight away, you're going to have to go seriously into the history and dig deep. Um, but if you just want to, you know, start dealing with it as you go, then logging all of these uh, problems that come from different channels, just logging them into one place. And if you al already can pinpoint like where the problem fits in the developer journey map, even better. So I would recommend something like that. Mm -hmm. You would point it to the developer journey map. Yeah, it's it's important to know like where this exact problem arises the most and affects the developer journey the most. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the last question uh, from Ola Tunji. I hope I didn't make a mistake. Uh, how does one transit from a technical writer role to a developer experience role? Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. Um, I wish I could tell you my personal experience, but I never was a tech writer. So uh, it's going to be harder for me to actually explain how. But I believe that you have to see things in, in, in a holistic con context, which you already do. But you have to start looking at it from user experience point of view as well. So you have to think about how the user is going to approach this tool or part of documentation, how they're going to work with it, and what different contexts they might get back to it. So. Um, I believe that diving somewhat uh, into business analysis could be beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so uh, this was from Josef. Um, I missed from the introduction uh, that you are the lead uh, developer experience analyst at uh, DX Heroes. Thank you yeah. for the presentation and for the knowledge that you shared and the uh, people come back to you for those slides, uh, for those of us who couldn't read it on the fly. Thank you very much. If somebody has questions for you, um, how they may ask those from you further or from your colleagues? Um, I'm going to leave an email within, I'm just going to write it out right now. Either on my email or I can share my LinkedIn profile as well for those of you who like to use LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So you are available at Yosef, uh, J-O-S-E-F, at dxheroes.io. And I guess your company also has a contact form at dxheroes.io. And your LinkedIn, uh, people find you at Yosef Zeman, Z-E-M-A-N. Thank you for yeah. the presentation. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. <laughs> you too.